policies are essential for many different reasons. They make our systems more secure, they facilitate employment of best practices and quite a few other things. But that is not today's subject. Today we are going to use policies through Kyverno together with Crossplane in an attempt to make the teams in our organization self-sufficient so that they can manage their applications and their infrastructure by themselves. I will not go into details of how Crossplane or Upbound Cloud or Kyverno work. There is already plenty of material that explore each of those separately and I will provide the links in the description to different videos or documentation or whatever you need to cover the basics of those tools. Instead, I will go through ways how we can integrate those two, which is Crossplane by Upbound and Kyverno by Nirmata. And by combining those two, we should be able to do something potentially awesome. And I just remember that I forgot to tell you what you're watching. My name is Victor and this is Upbound. We are a company behind Crossplane. Go and check it out, but do not do that right away. Watch this video first. Instead of giving you details and pep talk and me telling you, hey, this is why we use policies, this is why we like Crossplane and so on and so forth, I will go straight into the demo. I will show you how we can combine Kyverno with Crossplane. And by doing that, I will comment on the reasons why that combination is potentially awesome. Actually, it is not potentially awesome. It is awesome. Now let's jump into the demo. Actually, before I do that, let me tell you what I did before I started recording this session. I created a local Kubernetes cluster where I installed Kyverno and I installed Crossplane and I created a secret with authentication for my AWS account because that's where we are going to practice even though everything I'm showing you today equally applies everywhere. And I applied a couple of manifests. There was AWS provider and the composite that we will use today and I think that that's about it. Anyways, all the steps, all the commands, all the manifests, everything is in a gist and the link to the gist is in the description of this video. So use it if you want to follow along or if you want to reproduce what I'm doing later on and, or for whatever other reason you might want to do what I'm doing. Let's say that we have different teams in our company and one of those teams is going to be called a team and that team would like to have its own cluster where they will deploy their applications and do whatever they need to do in that cluster. Since me as a sysadmin or operator or SRE or whatever I am already created the composition with all the AWS resources and everything that that cluster might need, that team would need to define only a simple simply YAML file that contains only the things they need and nothing else. And that definition is minimalistic. It only defines the namespace where something should be happening, the ID, the matching labels that will help Crossplane choose the right composition, which in this case is EKS in AWS, and the size of the nodes. That team wants to have big nodes, large nodes. That team might not even know what large means, that is translated to T2 something something in AWS, but the only essential requirement for that team, for one reason or another, is to have large nodes. Now you might be having one of the two reactions. You might be confused when you hear me talking about cross-plane or compositions or what's or not, and in that case deeper dives and more basic explanations or advanced explanations of cross-plane and compositions are in the description. Or your reaction might be, hey, this is too basic. I already know that stuff. If that's the case, wait for a while longer because this is not really about compositions. This is about combining cross-plane with policies. I just need a cluster before I show you the combination. So let me go back to the A team. There is already a namespace in the control cluster, you know, the one that runs cross-plane. And the only thing that somebody from that team needs to do to get the cluster with everything that is needed is to execute kubectl apply and wait for a while. So that's precisely what we are going to do. It takes 15 to 20 minutes until AWS creates all the resources and I have two options here. One is to sing or dance for you or to entertain you in some way which I don't know how to do. So I will go for the second option which is fast forwarding to the end of the process. There we are, that's it, the cluster was created. We can see from the output of this cluster claim that the control plane, AKS, was created and that there is a node pool. And the only thing missing for the A team to use that cluster is to retrieve kubeconfig. I will use AWS command because I have it at hand. I could also retrieve kubeconfig from the secret that was generated by crossplane. But hey, I have AWS command at hand and I will use that to retrieve kubeconfig. And from there on, I, as a representative of the A team or a member of the A-team should be able to use the cluster. So let me deploy the first application in the newly created cluster and like that confirm that everything is working as expected. 
and lo and behold, it does not work. I could not deploy my application to the newly created cluster. And before you start panicking, that's not because the cluster does not work as expected. Actually, I could not deploy my application precisely because the cluster does work as expected. I did not create only the cluster and all the corresponding AWS resources. I did more than that. That simple manifest, those 10 lines of YAML, also installed Kyverno in that newly created cluster and applied some policy restrictions. And all that was created by somebody in my company, some operator or sysadmin that designed the composite, who enabled me as a developer not only to manage my own infrastructure, but also to have a cluster that is more secure, that follows best practices, and that is guiding me towards not messing it up. And in this case, we can see a policy violation that says host path volumes are forbidden. And it makes perfect sense because let's face it, host path is not a good idea. Now I as a developer, or I might not know that that's a bad thing. And that's where policies come into play. They were set by somebody to guide me as a developer towards not making silly mistakes. Now, I will not waste your time by showing you the manifest of the application and what should be changed to fix this violation. Instead, I will show you how did we get here. What did I, as a sysadmin or SRE or whatever I am, a person who knows those things, do to enable developers to manage their own infrastructure and have clusters that are guiding them towards better outcomes or towards not making silly mistakes. I did two things, or I created two manifests, let's say. One is the composite resource definition or XRD that defines the interface that everybody else in my company can use whenever they want to create a cluster and all the corresponding resources in any of the cloud providers or on-prem or wherever we are running our infrastructure. That XRD is essentially an interface that others can use, a simplified version of the interface that focuses only on things that matter for everybody else and abstracts and composes the things that are really, really, really needed. In this case, we all collectively decided that what matters for the majority of people is the Kubernetes version, the size of the nodes, and the minimum number of nodes, because it is assumed that cluster auto scales to whatever size is absolutely necessary, but you can specify the minimum number of nodes. Later on, you will see that all those properties have default values, and that's what enabled the A team to focus only on the node size and assume that everything else is already predefined to be whatever should be. And then we have an implementation of that same interface of that composite resource definition or XRD. In this specific case, that implementation creates all the AWS resources that we need to run successfully a cluster, or to be more specific, an EKS cluster. There are many resources over there, and I will not go into details. I will assume that you understand how cross-plane works and how composites work, at least on the basic level. What matters in that definition within the context of this video are the last two resources. The second to last is the Helm provider config. That one will auto-configure Helm to be able to deploy whatever we need to deploy into the newly created cluster. And it does that by fetching kube config from a secret. And that secret was created at the very top where we define the EKS cluster. Further on, the last resource and the most important one within this context is called Kyverno. It is a Helm release resource that will apply whichever chart we want. And in this specific case, we are applying Kyverno into the cluster and Kyverno already comes with some out of the box policies. In a real world situation, I would either extend that chart to add specific policies that we really, really, really need in that cluster, or maybe I would have two Helm release resources, one for Kyverno itself, another one for policies, or maybe I would combine Helm with Kubernetes resource that would just apply Kubernetes resources. Anyways, the point is that once we create all the infrastructure resources, we can tie them all together, including those required to set up the cluster properly to be ready for use. And in this context, ready for use 
means, hey, here's the cluster and it is already pre-configured with everything you need and everything you need are policies. We could follow the same pattern with many other things. We could install Istio or whichever service mesh you prefer or whichever other resources we need in those clusters. At the end of the day, the point is not only to give others the infrastructure they need, but to give infrastructure in a way that is ready to use and ready to use depends from one company to another. One organization would need this, the other one would need that. And you can combine whatever you really, really need through cross plane composites and then just give a simple interface and say, hey, you configure those few parameters and all the complexity is behind that. But ready to go cluster is not all we need. We might also need policies that will enable best practices and enable security and whatever else we might need at the time of creating infrastructure. We might not only want fully operational cluster, but also resources being created using certain rules, whatever those rules are. And that is what we are going to try to simulate or experience using a different team. We are going to move towards B team. Imagine that that team saw how easy it was for the A team to manage their own resources and get everything they need. And they said, hey, I want the same. So let me try to create the same. Let me try to get fully operational cluster with everything I might need with policies and what's or not for myself. I am a different team. I want the same as those guys. So the B team defined the same manifest, except that the ID and the namespace are different. They want to do the same by claiming those resources in their own namespace. Let's see how will that unravel. So right now that team is executing kubectl apply in the same way as the A team did, except in their own namespace. And it failed. Sysadmin or SRE or ops person or whatever that person is called, decided that the B team cannot use large nodes. A team can do that, but B team cannot, for whatever reason. And we can see here yet another usage of policies. While I was preparing for this video, inside the cluster that contains Crossplane, I created a policy that you see in front of you. In a nutshell, that policy says, hey, if you're a B team, you cannot have large nodes. Everybody else can, but you can't. I will skip the discussion why one team should have something that the other one doesn't and so on and so forth. And only say that there are always those differences, especially within bigger companies. Some teams have certain things, other teams have other things depending on their needs and so on and so forth. The point is that B team cannot have large nodes. And instead of creating Word documents that explain what they can and cannot do and hope for the best, we created a policy that prevents the team from doing that. So B team has no option. It cannot run large nodes. The only thing that people in that team can do is modify the definition and change large to small or medium or whichever smaller type of nodes they want to use and apply the definition. From there on, they should have no problem creating their infrastructure because they're not violating any of the policies. And now comes the important part. This was a very quick introduction into a combination of using Crossplane and Caverno together and accomplish something potentially awesome. This was a very quick introduction into how to combine policies and Crossplane and accomplish something potentially awesome. I did not have enough time to go into details, but I will, or actually we will. There is an upcoming webinar in the Crossplane channel where you should be able to get much more information, much more detail and ask any question about Crossplane or Caverno, or both of those, or anything else you want. So please make sure to subscribe to the Crossplane channel and get notification about the webinar. Or maybe you're watching this video after the webinar happened, and in that case, you should find the link to the webinar in the description of this video. And that's about it. See you next time. Cheers.